and welcome to Head to Tail Animal Adaptations. Today we are going to learn what this that we use to keep warm has in common with a fox's tail. We're also going to learn about animal vision with our magic animal vision glasses. Thank you for coming and stay tuned. So I'm going to mention about feet coats and and how their coats have changed and we're gonna go over their eyes and we're gonna do some activities okay does that sound good to you yeah but have the humans adapt, adapt too well we humans adapt our environment to us and we're I'm gonna talk about that I'm so glad you brought that up so when it's cold like snakes how you shed skin yes once I was at a camp uh and we found snakes yeah there was Whoa. So what's this? What do we use something like this for? Keep warm. Uh, yes. Keep warm. Well, there's another animal that will cover their head with their tail. Do you know what this is? Fox. It's a fox. So the fox has evolved to have a fluffy coat to keep them warm in the winter and this fluffy tail so when they sleep they cover their tail so then their nose and their ears and their eyes so they don't freeze we don't have that we have to use a blanket or a scarf or a coat right mm -hmm. so we have adapted our environment to us now do you know what this is well actually this, if you sleep with wolves then you make yourself coyote warm. So. this is actually a husky it's a, a domestic dog and the reason I put up domestic animals is because we've adapted them to, to take care of our needs as well. So these guys pull sleds for us. Yeah, I read a book yeah. about that, remember? The move out of the sun. And they, so they've been bred to run long distances and have lots of energy and have this fluffy coat that has two layers, a, a soft layer underneath and a harsh layer outside because where do you think they live? Where were snow. they? They were, uh, what you say? In the snow. In the snow, up north. They pulled sleds. They're sled dogs. And also, where you would sleep is you dig a hole in the snow because under the snow, it's warmer than over. Exactly. The snow insulates, right? Kind of like our coats insulate us. You, re you met Merida last time, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, Merida had that fluffy coat. Why did we breed such a fluffy coat for her? Not me personally. Because where she was developed, it was a harsh environment and it needed to keep her warm. And this here was to keep wolves from biting her neck because she had to guard the sheep. So we have changed even animals to take care of our needs as well. I mean like, yeah. How about this guy? Uh, what is this? Beaver, very good. Now beavers have a special kind of coat. They have an oily outer coat that le keeps water off of them so that they stay dry because they live a lot in the what? Water in cold too, right? Yep, so, they build dams. Yes, they build dams with their tails. So look at their tail. Their tail is flat, right? Their so they can kind of like the rain. Exactly, so they can pack down the mud and they can slap the water when there's a predator coming. So that's protection from predators too, right? And then they have lots of fat under their skin in the winter and that keeps them nice and warm. Now some animals' coats change color. This is an Arctic fox. So they're this color in the summer and they turn white in the winter. Oh, Why? Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that is. Why do you think he turns white in the winter? Snow or rats? Can you find him? Can you see him? He's kind of hard to see, uh, isn't he? Man. Yeah, he's right there. But if he put his tail over his head, then we can't see any black at exactly. all. Exactly. And what do you call that when an animal blends? Camouflage. 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 You're very good. I can see him. My hospital. All right. So here's our friend, the Arctic fox. And in cold places, we also have, who's this? Penguins. Where do they live? Uh, up north or south. Uh, south An America. Antarctica. Antarctica, okay. down south. Yeah. They okay. have fluffy undercoats, just like Merida, and then an oily outer coat 
and they have lots of fat under their skin to keep them warm. Guess what boys give to girls for a present? A penguin. Oh. Ah. Oh, okay. Why do they give each other a rock? I'm sorry. Oh, they do. That's part of their mating ritual. Oh. Now, you see this deer? Do you notice there's snow all over his coat? Why do you think there's snow on his coat in the winter? Why doesn't it melt? Mm, because on the outside, it's hotter. Than no, it's colder. It's a good, that's a very good, good, good idea. What happens is they got a lot of fat in the winter, and then they have a soft, fluffy coat, and then they have a really harsh outer coat. They're so well insulated, they don't lose any heat, so the snow won't melt. Have you guys ever gone out in the snow and played in the snow a long time and it's yes. snowing and your coat gets covered with snow? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. But they don't have to wear a coat. And they change colors. In the summer, they're more tan. And in the winter, they're more gray. Why do you think that? Because it's the sun. No. Yes. Where do they live? Where do deer live? In the trees. Yep. The and see how he kind of matches the trees? And what was that word we learned? Camouflage. Camouflage. Very good. Ooh. So let's look at these guys. In the desert, it's it's what? What is it? In oh, it's hot. Really, really, hot. really, hot. really, really hot. hot. In the morning, it's always very hot. In the night, it's always very cold. Exactly. So we all know who this guy is. Yeah, oh, exactly. This is called a fennec fox. And look at his ears. Why would he have such big ears? So I can listen for predators. Huh? Yes, and why else? So I can hear well? I mean. So they can hear well. Well, if you were to look at his ears, if you shine a light to him, if you shine a light to your own ears, you'll see the blood vessels going through, right? Well, they have lots of little tiny blood vessels and the blood goes through their ears and cools them. So that a lot of big desert animals have bigger ears to cool their ears. They cool their bodies through their ears. And they don't have a lot of fur on their ears to keep them cool. And it's so they can hear their predators and the prey. Hedgehog? That's a hedgehog. And where do they come from? This one comes from a hot place. The desert. Mm -hmm. Africa. Africa. And they do something really cool. What do bears do? They bite people and they... How do bears survive the winter? Hibernate. Hibernate. These guys do the same thing in the summer, but it's called <laughs> estivate. Can you say estivate? Estivate. estivate. Um, turtles do it too, or tortoises. And that's kind of a neat adapt. They just sleep away the summer because it's super hot where they live. Now, we, we talked about Mr. Camel. I'm going to make you smarter than most adults. So... Do you mind if I put you on the spot, Mom? Are you going to ask me about dromedary and... No. no. I'm going to ask you what's in the hump. Oh, it's fat. It's oh, not water. Darn it. Most, parent, most adults say it's water. And that's actually fat. So when they are going out on a trip, they eat lots and they store up their fat. Then when they go on their trip, they start to use the it fat as cold. energy. And it's, it actually gets smaller. Oh. So they won't have much of a hump at all. Oh, oh! Is that why cool? do people ride them on the hump? Because that's there. They're a good desert animal to ride, so the hump is there. They gotta, they can't very well sit here. It's too much pressure on their neck. I see. okay. So they have to ride up here. That's awesome. They're not oh, yeah. very comfortable. And camels can ride, can go a really long while without and water. And they also use it for warmth. Well, a little bit of warmth, actually, but not really. It's more it's just for, the for food. Yeah, but they also. You guys go like this. Does it feel moist on your lip? Yep. What about when you go outside in the winter and you go, and you breathe out and you see kind of a smoke, right? Yeah. That's the water in your breath going out into the cold air. Do you know if these guys were to go out in the cold air, they would not have that. They, they do not put any moisture out of their nose. They have a special nasal passage and it's curved like this, and it absorbs the water as they breathe out, so they don't lose water like we do. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. Uh -huh. And they're sand colored. Most animals that live in hot places are sand colored because it reflects the sun and it's not as hot. 
They have a lot of other cool adaptations that we're not going to go into. We could probably go in a whole class on these guys. Giraffes. My favorite animal. I actually had the privilege of studying these guys in Africa when I was young. And they are the coolest animal. So, what about their coat? That's kind of a funny coat, isn't it? Why do you think they have that pattern? Blending. Blending in. Yes, for camouflage. They all, and every single giraffe has a different pattern. Just like if you look at your fingerprints, they're different from your brother's yeah. fingerprints. And zebras. Zebras also have different patterns. So that's so that they can um, blend in. You can tell the difference if you're studying them. But also, see these spots? Yeah. They have, if you were to take an infrared camera, the spots would show up because they have blood vessels that go along the inside of those spots. Them, just like the ears on that fennec fox. And you would see, if you were to shine an infrared camera at them, you would see the spots show up because that's where they lose heat so they can keep cool. And you said, do the other giraffes recognize each other by the spots or is that just us? Uh, they can, yes. Yeah, we don't know that for sure though because we're not in their head. But they can find their um, mothers, their fathers, their um, herd mates. Yeah. So their vision is good enough to see that pattern. Mm -hmm. And they're also, you got to figure they're 18 feet up. So they have really good vision. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And they're, do you know their legs are nine feet tall? Oh. That's like as big as my um, neighbor's pool. Yes, they're the tallest land mammal. Now, what about this? See? Can you find the giraffe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I can, a good right there. There you go, yep. So a predator oh, might good. not see that. See how much oh, they yeah. blend in? A lot of people say, oh, I don't yeah. see how they blend in. But when they're in the trees, they do blend in a bit. And how about here? Would you like to come up and find the predator in here? See if you can find him. Because predators also are camouflaged. hiding in the grass. It's a lioness, a lady lion. Oh, I see now. Yeah. So predators also have good camouflage. Now you guys mentioned the zebras, and you were really good about saying they use, they have separate, um, all, they all have separate prints. But why are they striped? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Same what? thing as the giraffe. Yes, kind of. This is a deception camouflage. So when they're all together in the herd, a lion can't quite tell from a distance where one ends and the next one begins. Gives them some safety. And, and they would they would blend in in some grass from a distance. Like, I wonder if there's any animals that can hide in the water. Oh yeah, I mean sharks. Turtles, sea turtles, they're, they have the pattern they have. So they blend in in the water. And uh, one shark, two now, fish. See, remember I mentioned the tan? Can you see these antelope? Yeah, I yeah, can. Okay. They're pretty hard to see though, aren't they? They're a little They're bit easier than the other ones. Yeah. They're not very hard. And how about this one? She's hard to see too. Uh, I yeah, see uh, turkey. Easily. For the animals, they can't see. They don't see as sharply yeah. as we do. All right, everybody knows this guy when it comes found to him, camouflage. Found him. Vendable. Yeah, vendable. So these guys have a really cool adaptation. Their skin reflects different colors. They have plates under their skin that move according to their mood or the temperature, and they can reflect different colors. Let's see if we can find them in this one. Oh yeah, I can see him. Where is he? He's under the stick. Very good. Do you think that bird sees him? I mean, he's looking right at him. Yeah, he looks like he's looking at him, doesn't he? He's like, mm. Now, how about here? Can you find the animal in this one? Yeah. Uh, I think. DJ. The moth? It's the moth right there. So, a lot of insects will mimic leaves. 
Oh yeah, and um... How about I, this one? Butterfly, I can see it. It's, um, yeah, butterfly. Oh. It's pretty butterfly. cool though. Now, do you think we people can camouflage? I mean... Yes. Yes, but no. Yes. How would we camouflage? Mm, in I the mean, trees. In the military. You see? I think I'd stick out in a tree, wouldn't I? You'd see me. What would I have to do to hide in a tree? Wear camouflage like green and... Exactly. And go in like grass. That's mm -hmm. what they do in the army. So what is this? A zebra. Yep. <laughs> you think it's a giraffe? Look again. Oh, look at that. Cool. And how about... Wait, I don't get it. Come close and you can see. See? Look on the bottom of her leg. It's a person camouflaged as a giraffe. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? Now, what about these guys? Why are they so colorful? How do they blend in? They can hide in, like, because I think they're, like, in tropical places. And there's like a lot of flowers and things like that. And I don't know, they can kind of fly, so they mm -hmm. gotta get away. Do you know these are people too? What? Mm hmm. Wait. I can this see. This is that. so weird. Oh! Do you see this hand Legs. coming oh, up this here? This is her foot. Here's a foot. Here's the leg here, an arm, and hand. Isn't oh, that cool? That's so weird. <laughs> we have one more. In is that Can human? Can you find the person in here? So we humans can camouflage, but we need someone foot, to put hands. I saw that. I could, that's a foot. You see yeah, two yeah, people. Oh, this is yes, two yes, people. Yes. I see the head, and then there's another head here. Isn't that super cool? That's so awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's quite an artist. That's awesome. All right, some animals don't need to camouflage because they have a really good self-defense. What's this guy's self-defense? Um, um, he's stinky. Yeah, he's really stinky. And he sprays that can burn their eyes. So he doesn't need to be camouflaged. And that's where we get to mimicry. So, oh, I know it. Who knows what this is? Feather. Who's it from? Mm, peacock. Peacock. Why would a peacock have these feathers? Um, to scare an animal. Exactly. Yeah, um, that's what I was talking about. Uh, uh, so there's butter. There's a monarch butterfly and some other butterflies. They can, when predators try to find them, they can go like this and it might scare them because it looks like something. Looks and like look, eyes, right? Yes. And lion and tiger. But if you were a predator and, and you saw all these eyes looking at you that are six feet tall, I think you'd think twice Wait, about eating eyes? them. They're eye spots. They're not really eyes. They're mimicking eyes. They're pretending to be eyes. But they also, what was the fourth need that animals need? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, a family. Find a mate. The lady peas, pea fowl, which are called pea hens, think this is quite nice. So when they have these beautiful back feathers, and they're back feathers, not tails, um, lifted up, the ladies really like them. And that's how they get their girlfriend. So we saw a peacock um, at a zoo maybe, and it turned around. It opened all those feathers yep. and turned around and did this like butt dance. Yes. Is that also defense or is that just mating? That's just a mating ritual. Oh. Yeah. But then once they get their girlfriend, they shed these feathers. Really? Now why do you think they shed them? They're heavy. Well, wouldn't you be easier to grab if you had a six foot long tail? So yeah. it's to protect them from predators. But it's not the tail. It's the back, right. So it's like a hairy tail. Yeah, like well it's actually back feathers. So is it so. like your teeth, how it wiggles? Or yep, just like your hair. Yep. If you've ever had chickens, they molt, they lose their feathers, and then they grow them back. And they don't have A them. lot of male birds who are really colorful will lose their feathers after the breeding season because they're really visible from, by predators, and they'll get a drab color. The peacock doesn't really get too much drab color. It just doesn't have that big back um, fan. Now, you guys, you said about the eye spots. All these snakes have eye spots on them so that they look like they're looking at you. 
And what's this? Does anybody know what kind of frog that? A cool frog. And that, look, these that. are poisonous. Yep. Awesome. So if you're poisonous, you can be brightly colored because everybody knows if they mess with you, they're gonna get they're gonna get eaten or they're gonna get killed. Or it's gonna be stinky. So some animals will look like a poison animal because it's called mimicry. And this is a perfect example. This is called a coral snake right here. And they're very poisonous. This, however, is not poisonous. It's a, it's a harmless king snake. But they look similar, don't they? Oh, yeah. And here's a little fun saying. Red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. Red touches black, you're okay, Mac. So if the red touches the yellow, it's the poisonous snake. If the red touches the black, it's the, the harmless snake. That's... They're not, these aren't around here. Yeah, I know, but that's awesome. Isn't that cool? But a predator may not know that saying because, you know, they don't do sayings like you we know, do. You know, they're not humans. Oh, right. They get talked that way. I mean, I mean, but they don't need to eat them. So let's do feet. We're going to do a fun exercise on camouflage at the end. Let's talk about feet. Now, everybody here has feet. And we, what do we use our feet for? Walking. Walking, and running, running and swimming. jumping, swimming. and swimming. Well, it just went like a while ago. So do we have claws? No. We no. Have we have nails, don't we? Yeah. Well, we nails and claws are the same thing. It's just in animals, they've gotten really long. So here's a leopard. Their claws come out like this. Why would it be good to have claws that come out and grip? So you can scare them. Catch animals. Catch animals? What else? And scare What happens if a cat gets scared outside? Where does it go? In, in a oh. Here's a hint. In a tree. In a tree. Up a tree. Very good. So if they have detachable claw, uh, retractable claws, chances are they go in the trees. Leopards love to go in trees. But this cat doesn't. His claws stay out like a dog. Can you think what cat this might be? I'll give you a hint. Um, jaguar? It's a jaguar. No, nope, he's the fastest oh. land animal. Oh, the cheetah. cheetah. I mean... Cheetahs don't go in the trees. I mean, he's the fastest land animal, but he can run for only a short amount of time. Exactly. And, I mean, ostriches are, are slower, but they can run, run for, like, a long. really long time. Yes. So I think ostriches are... Like 10 miles. You want to hear a funny ostrich story? When I lived in Africa, I went into the outhouse, which is an outdoor bathroom, and the ostrich came out and he was right outside the door and wouldn't let me out of the bathroom for four hours. Because ostriches can be quite dangerous. And you know why? He was doing his mating dance. I think he thought I was a good lady friend. So that's my ostrich so story. So what makes them dangerous? Uh, they can kick really hard. Oh. They have pretty long nails. Oh, um, and, uh, oh yeah, the good thing about cheetahs is when they go really fast, you can catch an animal because I mean ostriches could catch an animal. They are fast, but cheetahs have like a really fast burst. You just speed. like their so, hair. Like, you know a lot on animals. So like their hair, and then you go over there. But then right. you can't run very fast. Right now, does anybody know what kind of dog this is? I've seen it before, but I don't it's know a lab. Animal. It's the most lab popular animal. dog in America. Now, why would I put a lab up here? Well, remember I said we breed, we bred dogs to do a purpose? The purpose of the lab was to retrieve ducks from the water. So they have a very special foot. They look webbed. They're webbed. Isn't that cool? Whoa. The Newfoundland also has webbed feet. And who else has webbed feet? Duck. 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 Why do you have a webbed foot? Uh, because it needs to swim and it can't use its arms because it doesn't have to. Right. We have arms, though. We do have arms. We have I mean, arms. did you know that birds use their feet as arms, actually? Yeah. To eat food. We saw it on our window mill. So who else has a web foot? Mm, and what's this one? Water. Mr. Beaver. Beavers do, because they swim. So I think ours. the platypus is probably the strangest animal I've ever seen, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. They have yeah. this strange little, they have this strange tail. They have... What's this? They have a duck bill. It's almost like somebody really made a mistake putting them together. A what do you think the, the bill is for? Why would they have a duck bill? Mm. It's 
they can crack. Because they eat plants? Yeah, it's so they can sift the mud when they're eating, because they live in the river. All right, everybody knows this guy. He Do that. Now, hoofed animals are really cool. They're divided up by the number of hooves they have. So if they have an even number of toes, or if they have an odd number of toes. That's how they classified in science. And this is a zebra. And it's an even. Can you think, it's an odd number, it's just one. One toe. They have one toe. Um, they actually have fused bones that make it into one toe. And um, can you think of another animal that has a foot like this? Zebra. No, yes. Horse? Horse. And donkeys. Oh. Why would it be a good idea one foot. One toe. Run fast. Run fast. That, you got it right. Good answer. By only having one hoof, all the muscles in their legs control that hoof and makes it powerful and fast. So they can use it to protect themselves. They so can use they can it, run away from they predators? They can run away from predators. And do you know, is this bone? Or know. is it fingernail? Fingernail. Fingernail, yeah. Now, remember I said how they walk on one toe? What does this have in common with an antelope? Could you way. imagine if you had to run away from a predator wearing this? No. That, no, that, hurts that your would foot be too, so then your foot's like hard. This. You're walking on your toes, aren't you? You're walking like this. Doink, doink, doink. That's my daughter's shoe, or I'd let you try it on. Um, so this cool, cool antelope is called a clip springer. And look at their foot. They're walking on their toes like a ballerina, aren't they? Ah. Why would My they do that? Why is that? Oh, wow. That's because they live in the cliffs where there's little tiny crevices, and they bounce up and down the cliffs, and their little feet stick in. Unlike a mountain goat who has two, like a goat. So what does the giraffe have? Giraffe has two. Um, camels have two. Cows have two. All your antelope have two. Um, they can run a little faster with just two as opposed to one, but it can also grip. And then the camel has a pad on it that keeps the hot sand from burning their feet. Rhino. Rhino has three. Isn't that strange? Three toes. And they have these funny little nails. Yeah. Now, can you think of another animal that has feet like this? Elephant. Horse? Elephant. Very good. Elephant. They're not in the same family because they have different number of toes, but here is a very strange looking animal that is in the same family as the um, rhino. It's the anteater. It's actually called a taper. Yeah. yeah. Good I, guess, though, because it's the same nose as an anteater. They live in the Philippines, but they look like a pig, don't they? Yeah. Pig has two toes, so do you think they're in the same family? No. 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 These guys are weird. They have three toes on the back and four toes on the front. Isn't that strange? That's weird. So they can dig in the dirt. And they use their nose to find food. That's an oddly adapted animal. He's kind of like the platypus, isn't he? And how about this one? Kind of looks like an elephant. Kind of looks like a rhinoceros. Oh. Hippos, yes. We saw a hippo. We saw a baby hippo. Oh, at the zoo? Mm -hmm. You went to Franklin Park? That's where he used to work. Worked there for 10 years. Are the gorillas outside yet? I don't know. I don't work there anymore. Um, but they also have web feet because they live in the water, don't they? Yeah. They have some pretty strange adaptations. They have hippos. webbed hooves? Webs. They do. They have some webbing in between their feet. I see that. So they can swim. That's awesome. And so they have to push off different kinds of soil mm -hmm. because they're both water and land, right? So they have yes. to be able to grip it yep. wet and dry. Wet and dry. And they live on riverbanks where it can give way. And they have to be able to get out um, if a crocodile comes at them. So they're actually quite fast. Like a moose? I'm where sorry? They, like a moose where they have to uh, go like on different planes of land that can yes. give way? Yes. Yeah. Um, so what about this guy? Ugh. So primates, monkeys and gorillas and things like that, they will use 
their feet for all different tools. And there are actually humans that use their feet because they don't have arms. So we're going to do a fun exercise. Would you like to try to write with your feet? Yes, definitely. Okay. That's so hard. come up and get a come up and get a clipboard. And you get to keep the pencil, yes. not the clipboard though. I'll need that back here. Would you bring one to your brother? Mother, sure. Thank you. Oh, you dropped your wait, come on, you need some pencil. And do you want to try too? Here you go. Any of the moms want to try? <laughs> here you go. I sprained my ankle today, so I am not going to try it. Um, so let's see if you can write your name with your foot. So put your put it between your toes. You gotta take your shoe off. And there are people that have adapted to write their names, to feed themselves with their feet. Like this. Hey, Yep. Good job. And I wonder if your left foot would do better than your right foot. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Try your other there you go, PJ. Good job, PJ. Try your other foot. Right <laughs> Let's try your other foot too and see which foot writes better. <laughs> oh yeah, that's to make I'm yeah. Try the other foot. So do you foot. think your right <laughs> foot works better, Kyle? <laughs> Kirk. Oh, sorry. Now, which hand do you write with? The right one. Yep, so it's definitely the similar. So that's K. That's I. Oh, nice. Good job. No, nope, definitely the first one. It looks like a lot of smiling. There you go. But, oh, I'm going to make another smiley face. Yeah, come on, it's really good. There you go, If you can see it, then K, I, R, K. Good job. So which hand PJ writes better? This foot writes a lot better. See? So this How about you? Which foot did you try? I mean, this actually looks like a really... And he's still trying to write. Ah. It's hard, huh, buddy? It is very hard. I know I couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. Maybe it'll be easier. I just read it very well, but... Wait, where's the pencil? I am so lost. So you can hold on to that clipboard because we're going to use it for another exercise. Oh, um... That, uh, this is what I did. This is the. This was go. this toe. This was the other toe. Hey, that's pretty good. I yeah. <laughs> Messed up face. Let's just call it that. So we're just gonna see how his comes out. Oh yes, that's good sure. job. I'm so glad I have a small name. I know. I mean, my real name's Peter. How'd it come out? Good. Peter, that's a circle. <laughs> oh, great job! Wow. All right, so we talked about feet. Let's go on to eyes. Now, what we're gonna write with our eyes? We're gonna do something else with our eyes. So I want you to take your hands, and our predators see. Do you guys know what binocular vision is? Well, you know, you get binoculars and you can look through them. Yeah, well, really close when you. Binocular means two eyes. So two eyes see. It helps us to see distance. So that if we were to jump off oh, something, we don't like miss. It like helps this? predators to find their prey. So take your hand and if you can close one eye, close one eye, and take this hand, all right, and move it till you don't see it to the center. Okay. Now take the other hand and the other eye. So switch eyes and do the same thing. And when it stops, open your eyes. That's where you have binocular vision. So here and here is what we see binocular vision. So out of our side of our eyes, which is called, you can stop with your hands, um, it's called our peripheral vision. So we are predators because our eyes are on the front of our head. All the predators have their eyes on the front of their head. Prey has vision on the side. So why do you think they need that? So, so they can then they look. can see. Like if they can see if someone's coming to get them. So let's see how much oh, we would have if, if we're prey. 
take your two fingers and look straight ahead and move your hands to the side till you don't see them. And then look, I that's as far that. as you can see without turning your head. Okay? I can see very far. But you can't see behind you, can you? I nope. can. I can. Yeah, but you're turning your head. I just so, going to attack you from the front. This guy. Ow. Ow. Can turn you think he's a predator head. or nope. a prey? Prey. Predator. He's a predator. Now he here's a cool her. fact. He can you move his head. Like 270 degrees they can move their head. Why do they move their head? Why don't they just do this? So they can find the animal. Because they can't. They can't move their eyes. So you guys can all go like this, right? They can't. Their eyes don't move in their head like ours do. So they have That's to move like their... That's like can turn their neck into life. Yeah, and because they need that binocular vision to see where their prey is so they can go get it. So they move. They might see a little movement and then they'll go like this and then they'll go get whatever it is. They're the only animal that can see in pitch black. I All mean, bats can. Bats use no. sonar. They yeah. don't really see. They can't see it. So they, they can't, um, most animals can't see if it's pitch black. And it's a cool reason why. So they have a film on the back of their eyes that reflects light in. Have you ever shined a light at night and you see little eyes shining at you? Like maybe your dog or a bunny in the yard? Oh that's, yeah. That's called eye shine. And what you're doing is you're shining the light through this black part, which is an opening in the eye, to the back of their eyeball and it has a membrane on it that we don't have and it reflects the light in so they can see in low light, so they can see a predator or a prey coming. These guys have a really big one, and look at their eyes. Do you, what, do you notice the color around their Yellow. eyes? Yeah. Orange. Orange. It's the white feathers. Oh, yeah. Do you notice how everything kind of comes in like this? That filters eyes, uh, the light in. Now, remember I said they can't turn their head? Got another fun exercise for you. For this guy, he turns, this is his chameleon, he turns his eyes independently. So, oops, we are gonna make eyes, chameleon eyes. So come get these, and you're gonna just take it and fold it into a cone, okay? Just like that. Here's two. You can make two if you want. One for each eye. Just here, two. Mm -hmm. One. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just kind of into a cone, like an ice cream cone. Here. Yeah. Yeah. No, like that. Okay. Fold it into a cone. Do you need tape or can you just hold it? Do you want to tape it? Hold this way. <laughs> All right, so I have my chameleon eyes. Chameleons have a really cool thing about their eyes. They can see independently. So, making my cones. I got my cones. Ah. I'm a chameleon. So, this eye is looking out for predators and going like this. And they telescope. I can't make them telescope, but they go like this. And they're looking around, and this one might find a fly. So then they will take both of them, and they'll go like this, and bam, their tongue comes out and gets the fly. It's really cool. Our brains cannot see two things at the same time. I can. So if I can see it. I can. If we were to do this, we have to, our brains have to go back and forth left eye, right eye. But chameleons see both at the same time. So he's over here checking out the bird that wants to eat him, and then he sees, ooh, fly. <laughs> he eats it. Either that or he goes, ooh, bird, I better run. That's cool. I think that's super uh, cool. There's this thing we did in school where okay, you looked okay, in one direction yeah. and someone holds like a letter over here mm -hmm. and try to read it. And I think if I go in the middle, if I look in the middle, I can see a little bit of both parts. Mm -hmm. So I can see your leg in that one and 
treat in that one. Yeah, but it's not exactly at the same time. Your brain is going like this. Bing, 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 bing. So that's so they can protect themselves. You can keep your chameleon eyes. Can the birds move their heads while they're flying? Mm-hmm. Here, this is... What do you mean? Like, I guess I can't tell when they're flying if they're like, look, so they have eyes on the side. Yeah. And they're going forward. So I imagine they need to somehow measure where Well, they they're... can see a little bit like this. So they have a tiny bit of overlap. They can see. And then the owl can't see on the side. So if it needs to turn... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Owls have a lot of cool adaptations. Do you know their feathers have little fluffy side parts to them? So they're, it buffers the sound so they're silent. So, everybody knows this guy, right? You know this guy? Uh, Tom Brady? Yes. Tom. Why, does he ha why do football players wear black under their eyes? I don't know. It's to, because they play in the sun, right? They only wear it when it's sunny. And the sun will glare off their skin and they can't see really well to catch the ball or to throw the ball. So it, it absorbs the sun and deflects it off their eyes. So. That's awesome. Have you ever seen these black spots on a cheetah? Mm, yeah. So cheetahs hunt during the day and that's why they have those oh, yeah. black spots to absorb the sun, so when they're running their 60 miles an hour, they have sharp vision. Now, name another animal that's a cat that hunts. Lion? Lion, jaguar. perfect. Lion or jaguar or um, leopard, right? Or cheetah. Look, no, not that, we just talked about the cheetah. Look at these guys' eyes. Do you see the light fur? Yeah. That reflects light into their eyes because they hunt at night, in low light. Is that that cool? is so awesome. Yeah. Now, a lot of animals can see color. A lot of people think <laughs> dogs only see black and white. Dogs actually see blues and yellows and some greens. They're red colorblind. They don't see any red. And um, birds, they see ultraviolet light. Some birds can see up to a million colors. We can only see 40,000 different colors. And dogs can only see 10,000 different colors. But there's a shrimp that has 15 different types of cones in their eyes. And the cones are what sees the color. They can see millions of colors. So everybody always says to me, well, what color does this animal see? Here's a rule of thumb. If an animal is colorful, like blue, red, green, purple, they usually see color. But if they're drab, they don't see a lot of colors. And that's an easy way to tell. So we're gonna play with color a little bit. Did you say millions of colors? Somebody sees something sees millions? Yeah. And so, um, there's probably bees? colors right now that we don't see. Oh, there's lots of colors we don't see. Bees will actually see ultraviolet too, and they can see um, pollen when it's ready. Same with hummingbirds. So they can see the pollen when it's and the nectar when it's ready in the flower. In 4-H, we teach about different kinds of animals, or you can learn science, or you can learn about cooking or gardening. Yeah. Did you guys learn a lot? Yes. Yeah. Good. You're all animal experts now.